Most peptides are injected either subcutaneously or into the muscle, although some can be taken orally or even a topical cream. We'll talk a little bit about different modes of delivery a little bit later. In any case, getting the LPS out and making sure that the peptide is pure is very important. The reason is that LPS causes an immune response. And while a tiny amount of LPS might not cause a massive immune response, the accumulation of many, many LPS exposures can start to become problematic. So I want to be very clear about my stance on this. If you are going to explore peptide therapeutics, I highly, highly recommend, indeed I implore you to do so with a board certified physician and to acquire peptides through a reliable source where the LPS has been removed, which typically means from a pharma company or from a compounding pharmacy. Okay, so let's discuss peptides for rejuvenation and repair of tissues. Now, it's pretty common to injure a given tissue, you know, to uh, you know, strain a tendon or tear a ligament or break a bone or I don't know, any number of different things. This is just kind of part of life if you uh, play sports or if you exercise frequently. Sooner or later, people tend to get injured. And when one does, there's you know, a lot of different things one can do. There's a lot of debate nowadays about whether or not you should emphasize cold or whether or not you should emphasize heat. There seems to be a growing movement towards emphasizing the use of heat to increase blood flow to a given tissue as opposed to cold. We've covered some of this on other podcasts. We'll cover it more on future podcasts. But you know, if you happen to injure yourself, typically what your physician will say is rest, maybe do some physical therapy. And indeed, those are excellent things to do. But one of course would ask, is there anything I can take in order to accelerate the healing of a given injury. And for that purpose, a lot of people over the years have explored the use of different peptides, in particular one that exists within the body naturally and that is involved in wound healing and repair. And that peptide is BPC, which stands for Body Protection Compound 157. BPC 157 is a synthetic peptide. So why would there be a peptide within the gut that's involved in tissue healing and repair? Well, in order to understand that, it's important to understand that the lining of your gut all along its length involves a bunch of different layers of cells that turn over at a pretty frequent rate. So unlike your brain cells that, for instance, after about age 25, you're not adding or deleting many brain cells, at least provided there's no injury or neurodegenerative disease, you're not removing a lot of those brain cells, but you're also not adding many brain cells. There are a few areas of the brain, like the olfactory bulb and the dentate gyrus at the hippocampus where there is some turnover, but for the most part, the neurons you have at about age 25 are the neurons that you're gonna have for the rest of your life. Your gut is very different